Let's put ourselves in the shoes of the committee members that are ranking these teams. I want to dive into the arguments for and against some of these teams that we're going to have at the end of the year that are all going to be vying for that fourth spot in the college football playoff. Namely, let's talk about Alabama, Utah, Oregon, and Oklahoma. Argument for and against each team. Ready? Go. Alabama. The argument for Alabama is that Alabama is Alabama. Their brand carries a lot of weight. This team has been great for a number of years under Nick Saban, and they're great again, or so we've been told. Um, this team, by the way, uh, is scoring at a clip that other teams haven't. Their offense is tremendous, so on and so forth. We've been told that. We can see that on the field. That's the argument for Alabama. Alabama is Alabama and their offense is fantastic. The argument against Alabama is their resume and schedule is horrific. It really is. In fact, to date, they have played only one team that is currently ranked. They lost that game at home. If they were to win out, I'm giving them a win against Western Carolina. I know it might be tough. Uh, and if they were to beat Auburn, they would have one win against a currently ranked team at the end of the season. That win would be against Auburn, who would be a four loss team at that point. That's not a real strong resume. So I go back to what is the argument for Alabama? Alabama is Alabama. Their strongest argument is that they are Alabama. Think about that for one moment. Now let's move on to the Pac-12 teams. Utah and Oregon, we'll start with Utah. Utah's resume incredibly thin at this po point. In fact, they do not have a win over a currently ranked team to this point. If they were to win the Pac-12 championship, they would only have one win over a currently ranked team at that point, and that would be over an Oregon team in the Pac-12 championship game. Now, what you can argue for for Utah is the fact that they are balanced, and when you look at their two best players, Tyler Huntley and Zach Moss, the running back and quarterback. They are 12-0 and 0 in the last 12 games that each player has played all four quarters. So if the committee is supposed to look at health, best players, injuries, so on and so forth, that's a pretty good feather in their hat. The fact that Huntley and Moss are 12-0 and 0 in their last 12 that they've played all four quarters. Now, it does not help them that their non-conference schedule is not good. They've only played nine Power 5 games, uh, all of them in league, and then a 10th in the conference championship game. Let's move on to Oregon. Oregon obviously has that week one loss. I think the best argument for Oregon would be if they were to win out, they will have won 12 games in a row, and they will be the first team in Power 5 history to go 9-0 in the regular season and win a 10th game in the conference championship game. That 10-0 would be the first one to ever do it. Now, Ohio State could also do it, but remember that Pac-12 championship game happens before the Big Ten championship game, so that's why I say they would be the first to do something like that, go 10-0. That's a huge deal. I think that would be honored by the committee. The argument against Oregon is that they lost to Auburn, which at this point is somewhere between the fourth and fifth best team in the SEC. And you've got other teams that you would be arguing or trying to argue for, like Alabama, who in this case would have a win over the team that Oregon lost to. Now, how much weight does that carry in the committee room? It remains to be seen. How much are they going to take a week one versus week 12 Auburn team and equate them as the exact same? In particular, when you're talking about an Oregon team that was banged up at the wide receiver position, and they've gotten better at that position as the season has moved on with Juwan Johnson, the graduate transfer. So there's Oregon. And then lastly, Oklahoma. And the Oklahoma one is interesting because Oklahoma's argument for would be if the chips fall right for Oklahoma and Iowa State wins the right games down the stretch and Oklahoma State wins the right games down the stretch, Oklahoma would wind up being a Big 12 champ with four wins over top 25 teams in the current rankings. That would be more than all the other ones. And you could make a strong argument that th their resume would be far stronger. Their loss was on the road to a team in Kansas State, which you could say is far better, or at least you could argue is better and was at the time than USC. We'll see where USC winds up in the poll. More on that in just a second. For me, when I look at all these teams, I think that the strongest argument of the four would actually be Oklahoma, which is why I'm really interested to see how the committee talks about Bama and Oklahoma specifically in the nature of is there fatigue with these teams that have been there almost every year. Oklahoma's been to the playoff three times, Alabama every single time. 
Is there any fatigue? Do they want new blood? This is where the human element comes to play. Is Oregon going to get a bump if they were to be the Pac-12 champ? Is Utah going to get a bump if they were to be the Pac-12 champ just based on the fact that they're new blood? If we see chalk, here's my opinion. Oregon goes to the playoff. If Oregon wins the Pac-12 championship, I believe that they're going to control their own destiny because of the fatigue that we're seeing uh, in the sentiment and narrative around Alabama and Oklahoma. Might not happen that way, but this committee generally takes the path of least resistance. I think it would be harder to try to make an argument for Oklahoma or for Alabama specifically, whereas you can just say, hey, 10-0 in league play, Oregon is a champion, and we're going to put them into the playoff. This committee likely takes the path of least resistance, and in this case, if Oregon wins the Pac-12, that's the path they'll take. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.